Hey everybody, Rob Ferretti here, and a very common question I get is how I still have a driver's license. It's a very personal question. However, it's a very valid question because not only myself, but a lot of people in this world get traffic tickets. Lots of people get traffic tickets. Pretty much everyone gets traffic tickets. My grandmother, my mom. It's almost, in my opinion, a tax in everyday life. Traffic tickets are fairly meaningless because all they're out there to do is really generate revenue. A cop will never write a cop another traffic ticket. They will never write the family of a cop another traffic ticket. It's just the way of the world. So you did find yourself getting a traffic ticket. Now what do you do? It's a very common question that I get. Uh, the best thing to do is you have to analyze it from either an emotional or a financial aspect. Uh, perspective. If you're going to analyze it from an emotional perspective, screw that cop, screw the law, screw... I can't help you. Don't watch the rest of this video because it's not going to help you. So if you do decide to take a financial direction and, and try to figure out what the best impact is for the rest of your life from this one very basic piece of paper, then keep watching. Good, you're still here. So now you have your ticket. Now you're, you're making a financial decision on how the best way in the long run, not necessarily the short run, to handle this ticket will be. Now, you have, the first thing you have to do is you have to look at how this ticket may impact your license. If you have a moving violation, it will impact your license. If you do not have a moving violation, it's probably not gonna impact your license. So if you have a seatbelt ticket, uh, a tint ticket, anything like that, pay it, be done with it. It's the smartest thing to do, you'll be out of it. it it's, it's done and gone. If it's a moving violation, there's a good chance points may go on your license. Now you have to look into your, uh, the reciprocity laws with your specific license in the state it was written in. If it was written in the state you're licensed, the ticket's gonna hit your license. If it's, a non, if it's a moving violation that was written out of state, you should definitely check to see if there's reciprocity between the state it was written in and your license. If there isn't, the best way to do it is usually pay the ticket, be done with it, and you don't have to worry about it for the rest of your life. Now, why is it important to avoid a moving violation on your license? Because it adds points, and the more points you get, the closer you get to suspension or revocation of your license. And it also may infect future employment if you have speeding tickets or any other uh, moving violations on your license. And lastly, it's going to affect your insurance. And your insurance is very important because your insurance, you pay for it year in and year out. You have to pay for insurance on your vehicles. So it's very important that you make sure you take care of all tickets to the best of your ability. So now you got your ticket, you decide, I'm gonna have to fight this, it's a moving violation in the state that I'm in. So the best thing to do is you have to do one of two things. You can either, if it's a very basic speeding ticket or it's your first violation, you can usually go talk to the prosecutor, you schedule a court date, you plead not guilty, you schedule a court date, and you go speak to the prosecutor on your own. If the prosecutor is not willing to give you a deal you're comfortable with, then you ask for an adjournment and you hire a lawyer and you send the lawyer back to do it. That is the best way to do it. The lawyer will always get you the best. And you have to look at the, the, the traffic lawyer is a terrible existence. They, they, that's, they, they need some sort of purpose in life. So if the best they could do is show up and speak to the prosecutor and get the same deal you got, they don't really have a job. So the, the, a lawyer, hiring a lawyer and spending the money on a lawyer will usually get you a better result than if you go handle it by yourself. But if you have a basic speeding ticket and all you want is to get a non-moving violation, it's very possible a prosecutor will just do that for you. So now you, you've taken two steps. You've gone to the court, you've pled not guilty, you've made a court date, you've spoken to the prosecutor, he's not willing to deal. Next step is to hire a lawyer, let the lawyer go in, it'll negotiate your ticket as best you can, and you minimize the impact of that ticket on your life. That is how to handle your traffic tickets. If you have any questions or comments, post them below. You get a whole bunch of free legal advice from everybody who comments on YouTube because they're automatically lawyers when they post on the thread. Uh, if you have any specific questions about a specific event, you can email rob at superspeeders.com. I'll do my best to give you some input. The last question you may have in your head is, hey, how do I know which lawyer to hire? There's a website that I discovered called Bernie Says. There may be other ones. I'll put a link to Bernie Says right here. Uh, Bernie Says is a website where you put your ticket up there anywhere in the country, in the United States. Lawyers will then bid on your ticket effectively and you'll have three different lawyers saying, I'm happy to handle your ticket. It'll cost you $210. I'll handle it for $150. I'll handle it for $300. You can then look at the lawyer's resume. You can choose which lawyer you want and move on from there. So that's, that's pretty much everything. There's nothing more to cover on tickets. Uh, we can get into this big long discussion as to traffic laws and everything like that. I'll save that for another video. Thank you for watching. Comments, questions below.